Blame Truth here, bringing you some more Call of Duty Black Ops Gulf War news. We have all the leaks now. I made a video the other day covering the perks that leaked and showing my disappointment. And uh, I think we have everything that's going to leak now at our leisure. So let's cover it. But before I do, I, I kind of want to get this common misconception out of the way. I, I was going through my old videos um, and, you know, I wasn't really a YouTuber back in 2014 to 2018. I was a Twitch streamer. I'd play Call of Duty on Twitch because I liked it. And I remember when Black Ops 4 came out, having to defend that game. Because even up to that game, I mean, Call of Duty's been getting complained about pretty harshly since Call of Duty Ghosts. And as it should, I mean, even back then we had uh, loot boxes and other stuff people didn't like. But I actually like Black Ops 4. That, that stands as the last Call of Duty game, the last real Call of Duty game to me. Traditional Prestige, it brought us 150 health, which I like that change. It was a hero shooter, it tried something different, kind of ripped off Overwatch a bit, but I can forgive it because I thought it was good arcadey fun. I think it's the last good Treyarch game they made. It had Blackout. I, I don't know, I, I liked it. And I remember back then actually making videos defending the game. No matter what you say, guys, no matter what you fucking say, it's the internet, man. You know, a non people will just, uh, from the protection behind their cracked, semen covered iPhone screens, will just type out whatever. Doesn't matter if you're liking something, disliking something, whatever. So at a certain point, I'm just like, who gives a shit? I'm not going to pander to anyone. I'm just going to say what I actually feel, right? But yeah, like I was in defense of Black Ops 4 when that game came out. I couldn't understand why a lot of people didn't like it. I just don't think they were very good at it. Uh, it had a higher skill gap, I think, than most Call of Duties due to the increased health. And I think that just rubbed people the wrong way. That and the specialist abilities just rubbed people the wrong way. But I get it. I get it. Modern Warfare 2019 comes out. I think this brings this entire new generation to Call of Duty, especially with Warzone releasing shortly after. And now we have this like really divisive split in the community. So a lot of newer players will not understand what I'm complaining about. A lot of newer players will think all this stuff I'm about to list to you will be brand new, fresh content. But I'm here to tell you right now that uh, if you've played this game for any amount of time, if you're like an old head, if you're an old school Call of Duty guy, you're not going to like what I'm about to share with you. And hey, I get shit every single year when I say, hey, this next Call of Duty, from what I've seen from the leaks, looks really bad, you know? And then people will downvote me, and then I swear to you, they will go back to that video where I called it and be like, hey, BT, I was wrong. You were right. This game sucked. I'm sorry. <laughs> it happens every year, dude. Last video, I actually lost subscribers before gaining some later on, but like people will downvote you and, and you'll lose subscribers. People just literally cannot handle the truth now. It, it, it's, it is what it is, man. If I'm the bad guy for just trying to save somebody 70 bucks and give them my honest opinion, then fine by me. But regardless of what I'm about to show you, true or false, the predatory matchmaking will be the exact same. The cheating issue, which is getting worse by the day, will be the exact same. So let's delve into this because this is something that can help you on current Call of Duty as well as the new Call of Duty coming out if you are just hell-bent on playing Call of Duty but you don't like the matchmaking. This is about the only thing you can do. Let's roll that footage and I'll get back to the leaks in just a second. So cheating and skill-based matchmaking have to be the worst offenders for any online multiplayer game right now. I've taken a break from Call of Duty, but I still run into cheaters and there's still strict skill-based matchmaking even in games like Dead by Daylight. So what I do to fix these issues is Private Internet Access VPN. I've been using their product for the past few months here and I change my geographical location so I can avoid both cheaters and skill-based matchmaking because both of those things are tied together. If you are any good at Call of Duty, you're gonna get put in higher skill brackets and you're going to run into more cheaters. Private internet access helps with both of these issues. You can kind of select your own server and then you are 
pretty much immune to both the high skill-based matchmaking brackets and the cheaters that lie within them. Because let's face it, those cheaters are not going to be in the lower skilled bot lobbies. Additional ways that private internet access VPN can help in gaming include bypassing ISP throttling. That's still a thing that goes on in 2024. Get you lower ping times and faster download upload speeds. You can avoid DDoS attacks, which I've personally been DDoS attacked by going to ham in a lobby a time or two in my day. Overcome IP address bans in case the false banning from Call of Duty takes you out. You can avoid that, etc. Right now, guys, you can go to PIAVPN.com slash BlameTruth to get 83% off private internet access with four months free. Not only is it a great tool for stopping these predatory gaming practices, but it'll also help you just stay more secure online in general if you want to use it browsing the web. Great deal. 83% off. Click the link in the video description or the pinned comment and get protected and get yourself a better gaming experience today. VPNs are a necessity. No, no shit. The guy who gave me this gameplay, Sefi, recently talked about how like he got doxxed or threatened to be doxxed on like some game he was playing just recently. So uh, be careful out there, guys. Protect yourself on the internet. A lot of weirdos. We'll just say, but let's get into the meat and potatoes here, finally. Now, I showed you guys the perks the other day, but we're going to go over them again here. There actually are some new perks that leaked, and there appears to be some brand new stuff. So, good. The majority of these perks, though, if you've played any amount of Call of Duty, you'll recognize them. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that we've seen a million times before. And I, I don't mind this to an extent, I think there needs to be some quintessential perks, like, you know, like Flak Jacket, which seems to be missing from this list. Maybe it'll be named something else. I don't know. Attack Mask as well, I think, are like these quintessential perks that just give you this rock, paper, scissors style perk setup. I, I like that, but I'm not seeing either of those in this list. Uh, we're seeing some staples here. I don't know why Anti Up and Hardline are in the list, because those were the same perk at a certain point in time. But most of this stuff, I'd say 80, 90% of it is just stuff we've seen before. We have some new stuff, though, like Grave Robber. Not sure what that is. Heavy Metal, Hunt Master. Those are probably things we have seen in previous Call of Duties. They may just be under a different name. We don't have the fine details yet. But if you take a look way down at the bottom there, you're going to see Survivor. This is uh, Last Stand, Second Chance, whatever you want to call it. And apparently it's going to be a way to pick yourself back up as well off the ground. So uh, make of that what you will. Overall, the perks look okay, but I'm worried there's going to be some essential things missing. And I worry that the new things aren't going to actually be new. But let's get into the streaks. This is where it gets very interesting. What do you guys notice about these streaks? Seriously, what do you notice about them? I'm going to tell you what I notice about them. There's absolutely nothing new. Everything, every single thing has been in a previous Call of Duty before. The Honey Pot, you might be saying that's new. I think it's just a booby trap care package. You drop it, you throw it. Hopefully some dumbass will like open it. But let's face it, if you're any good, you're going to be in the higher tier SBMM lobbies. And that's not going to work, like, ever. So what I might do for fun is I might reverse boost and join Billy Goat 57 and uh, throw a bunch of honey pots and just kill the, like, moronic enemy team <laughs> that way. That actually sounds kind of fun. But everything else, we've seen it before. Uh, e even down to the, um, you know, Hellstorm missile, the Valkyrie rockets. I mean, all this stuff. The RCXD is making its return, and that, that's fine. That could be, like, a staple. You know, you need the staples, right? You need, like, the recon drone, the UAV, whatever, counter UAV, care package. You know, RCXD. That stuff are staples. Helicopters, all that stuff. But, God, what I would do just for something new, man. Something just brand new. Like, take a chance. I get that it's in the Gulf War, but, I mean, this game's not realistic. It's <laughs> This game does not care about that they never do i mean 21 savage and snoop dogg and shit are in like world war ii Nicki minaj is on the battlefield like who cares at this point just make shit up like the game just continues to not know what it wants to be it sells itself as this essential like gulf war experience or this essential 
World War II experience or this essential 80s Cold War experience and then three months into the game's life cycle, you have this stupid stuff that, that's not canon to the time period at all. It's one or the other. Make up your mind. Stop false advertising to us. But I, I don't know. I see these two things and I'm just like the, the perk list and the, and the kill streaks and whatnot. And I'm just like, dude, this just looks like the same exact game. And, and you guys know I covered it earlier. You guys know the matchmaking is going to be the exact same thing. It's going to be the exact same thing we've complained about. Microtransactions, they're just going to keep rising in price. I don't know why these things have inflation. I mean, the games are going to be $70 now. The games are $70. At least Call of Duty games are now. So, I, I don't know. I, I just can't look at this stuff and really get excited. A, a lot of maps are making their return. And look, Treyarch makes great maps. And look, they make great zombies too. Cold War, for all the shit I gave it, I love the zombies. I played the zombies more than the multiplayer. But if you think this is going to be any different, any like radical change that gives you this fresh new experience from you know, Cold War, you're mistaken. It, it's going to be, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it's going to be the exact same game with like maybe this minute thing being different which is what Cold War was. Cold War did nothing better than any previous Treyarch game before. And I was excited for Cold War before it came out. I, I really was. Man, I ate my words. I ate my words. I was wrong. I could not be more wrong. And I learned after that. I learned very fucking quickly after that to not even be cautiously optimistic when it comes to Call of Duty because let's face it, at the end of the day, they just want to sell you bundles. They just want to sell you shit after you've already bought the game for $70. It's, that's just what it is. It is it is a means to get you into the store and sell you a bundle. There are going to be more bundles than ever this year, and they're going to be ridiculous. Uh, if you think Cheech and Chong and Modern Warfare 3 turning people into blunts is insane, like, just wait. They're going to have some, I swear to you, they're going to have some $40 bundle where it's like, I don't know, it's like The weekend or something, right? The weekend, uh, he shoots people and he turns them into microphones and then like his songs play as the death animation. That's going to be like the, the tr tracer pack or whatever. That's pretty cool, actually. I wouldn't be opposed to that if it wasn't $40, if I could earn it in the game. Black Cell, I, I would not be surprised. I swear to you, I would not be surprised if they upped the price of that. No, no kidding. <laughs> it's just, just one of those things, man. I, I can't get hyped for it, guys. And it's not that I can't afford it. Trust me, this is a tax write-off. Everything I, I do with this game and this franchise is a tax write-off. It's essentially not quite free, but it's essentially free, right? It, I still don't want to buy it because, I, A, I don't support it. B, it's the principle of the thing. And C, um, it's just stupid. I don't know. I, I don't really enjoy it that much. It just loses its luster so fast. If I don't enjoy the core game... If I don't have a car with a working engine, why would I give that car a paint job, for example? It doesn't make sense, does it? It's like pimp my ride. Like, you know, your car is like, its brakes are, are completely shot. But hey, we put PSPs in your rims. Hey, thanks, Exhibit. I appreciate it. But I'm a danger to everyone on the road. And that's how I feel with this game and uh, this franchise now. There was another leak that I, I'm not going to cover in depth, but... It said that they were going to be bringing back a lot of stuff from Black Ops 4 into this particular uh, Call of Duty, the Gulf War, I mean. And um, I can't really, like, verify that. I haven't really seen any other leaker tweeting that. But I did see an article about it. And if that's the case, again, it's just kind of like more recycling. And I I've seen it all, man. I would love if they just had a really, really creative team that did everything they could to bring us something new. Like like Sledgehammer, for instance. I, I gotta give them credit, man. Look, here. You guys say, like, I never say anything positive. Well, here I am. I'm gonna say something positive about Modern Warfare 3. This new season, this new season has higher average players than Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone did this time last year, April 2023, we have higher average players now. They, they actually turned the corner and had percentage gains this particular month. 
Why is that? Because they actually gave us a really good season with pretty much all new content. Like they were ahead of schedule on making new maps. Now, look at this, look at this image here, okay? Look at this Steam Charts average player's image and tell me, did EOMM SBMM bring players back? Did it bring a 13% gain from the previous months? Did it bring a, a higher average player count and a higher peak player count? Then April 2023, what, what was the cause of this? Was it EOMM? Was it SBMM? Was it bundles in the store? Maybe, but I think it was the fact that they gave us a bunch of new content and that's what I want to really hammer home here. We, we're sick of the recycling. I think everyone is. Even the people that have played since MW 2019 have to be getting sick of it at this point. <laughs> you know? We want new stuff. And look, we come back and we play the game and we'll spend money on the game if you give us new stuff. I gotta give Sledgehammer credit for the get high mode, the like parkour, you know, retro wave, 80s inspired mode. Very creative, very nice. I like it. Make it like a permanent game mode and keep bringing content to it. People don't want to fucking sweat in this, this science experiment of, of a matchmaking process anymore. We want to just kind of like chill and play something arcadey and fun. Like get high. And we want new content. We want new innovative content. That's literally it. it, it it's not rocket science. Gamers have not changed from 30 years ago. So why? So while Activision is focused on milking whales and people that are going to play the game no matter what dry in the MTX department, they are losing players. Maybe they finally have realized that, hey, we got to give them something new occasionally or we're going to keep bleeding players. And, you know, props to Sledgehammer for not only, not only like riding the ship here and getting a percentage player gain on Steam that, that is pretty rare for the month of April in general, you know, with Call of Duty from what I've seen. But not only that, they have bested Infinity Ward. This should show that whatever Infinity Ward is doing or not doing is not good for the series. This should show that while Sledgehammer's game is essentially a patch that sold less than Modern Warfare 2, it is performing better in average players, in peak players, and it's because Sledgehammer has the time and the resources, and dare I say, even the creative talent to bring us something new, finally. For everyone saying, like, I'm just negative for the sake of it, take what I said right there and just, just play it over a fucking loudspeaker at this point. I am praising them for giving us something new. But then here comes Gulf War. And I, I think I think Modern Warfare 3 is going to be a lot like Cold War, where Cold War was really cooking, man. It, it was like... It was becoming a good game. And then right as it's hitting its peak, it's over. And then here comes the next shitty game. Here comes Call of Duty Vanguard. It's like, man, these games don't have time to breathe. These devs don't have time to breathe. I wouldn't mind, I seriously wouldn't mind if they pushed Gulf War back and just gave us another year of Modern Warfare 3 and gave Sledgehammer the creative freedom to do whatever they wanted each season. I, I honestly would love that. And I would try to play it crappy matchmaking, which isn't their fault. Be damned. Guys, I'm out of time though. Uh, let me know what you think of all this. I, I don't think Gulf War is going to bring enough new to the table. I mean, they say like four years, Treyarch's have four years to work on this, but we saw what Modern Warfare 3 brought us with three years and 3,000 plus devs, and that was the worst Call of Duty of all time. So four years and 4,000 devs or however many he's working on this one, I, I, I don't have any hope. I, I really don't. I would love to be proven wrong, but I have yet to be proven wrong. And even if I am proven wrong, there are so many things behind the scenes involving the matchmaking, the overpriced MTX, the lack of just giving the devs time to work on stuff that is worrying me and recycling of course that's the big thing i want to get across in this video that recycling like we have to be sick of it now like it's showing in the numbers it's proving in the numbers that we're sick of the same old thing we want new innovative creative stuff in this franchise guys i'm out of time i hope you enjoyed and i'll catch you on the next one have a good one peace
parting advice. Ah!